All right, we're ready. Please introduce yourself, state your name and DOC number for the record. Oh, I apologize. We're going to uh, open up. We're at RCC. Today is a 11, it's a Wednesday, May 17th, 11.04. My name is Brennan Kelsey, be chair. Along with me is Mr. Marabella and Ms. Renatza. Staff support is at DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge. You guys are at RCC. Staff and support there, please introduce yourself. Y'all are on mute. Keith Beckham, Deputy Ward. Kristen Herbert, Records. Stacy Rao, Classification. All right. Thank you for being ready for our first case. Please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Bernard Forrest, 52AA91. Right, Bernard, you heard the introductions. We'll have a parole interview, ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. All right, and I see you have Miss Meredith. That's Angerson. Angerson, yes. And if I do, oh, yeah, I I thank you. Mer Meredith Angerson, uh, Michanna Buckley, Courtney Forrest, Tanya Forrest, Amy Forrest, Derek Forrest, Trust Claire McGee, Ashi, Ashi Le Levi, Candy Levi, Tamita Hall, Bria Forrest, Angel McGinnis. Candace Scott, Kimberly Forrest. So we'll have the attorney will speak and then just two other people. So whatever two other people you, you guys want to speak. They did put the wrong name down. Angela Forrest. Okay, well, they, they, they put the wrong name down. How about that? Somebody did. It must have been written in. Your aunt, what's your name? Angela. Angela Forrest. Okay, sorry about that. Apologize. Okay, and then again, we'll have, uh, it looks like they want Kimberly Forrest to speak. She's on the phone, so that'll be one, and then two of you guys can speak here, if you choose to. Menard Forrest, DOC number 528891. You're a second-class offender for all eligibility date 12 2 2021 good time 11 2 2046 full term 10-27-2047, 35-year sentence. Possession with intent to distribute marijuana, possession of cocaine, 400 grams or more, habitual offender, conspiracy to distribute schedule two, disguising transactions involving drug proceeds. That sound correct? Yes, sir. All right. Hi, right, Bernard. How old are you? 42. How many years have you been incarcerated on this 35 year sentence? 10 years, seven months. And uh, what do you currently do? Are you a trustee there? No, sir. I'm in high state school. And what do you, so you're currently working on your uh, GED? Yes, sir. How's that going? It's going fine. I was supposed to test it today, but I was. I had a hearing today, so I got I'm gonna get tested tomorrow. Okay. What uh what grade did you finish school in? I mean what what grade did you go to school? Did you drop out in? 10. Okay, why'd you drop out? Because I was losing my I lost my mom when I was like 17 years of age. I lost my dad when I was 13. And right, but why'd you drop out of tenth grade? Why'd you drop out of tenth grade? Would you just were you doing drugs and selling drugs and using drugs? Were you drinking? Were you cut? Why did you drop out of tenth grade? Why do you think? I really didn't. I really didn't start selling drugs till I was like nineteen. But when I was seventeen, I really didn't have any stable support and. My family, I had one sister that was living in the state and that just led me to, I really didn't have nowhere to go like. So you just, just quit school because you, just cause, just because, no reason? You didn't have nowhere to go? I mean, were you running the roads? Were you street, I mean, what, what, I mean, there had to be a reason. I mean, you were yes, going sir. to school for a minute and then you just said, I'm not going back to school. Yes, sir, just emotional. 
hurt, just just dropped out. Did you ever go to work? Yes, sir. I had jobs. What kind of jobs do you have? I mean, real jobs before you doing the using the drugs? Yes, sir. I had construction job. I worked at sawmill. I worked in doing some some logging. Why'd you get into selling drugs? Did you have a drug problem? Yes, I started using marijuana. I smoked marijuana when I was like maybe 14 or 15. And as time went on, like I said, I lost my, my parents. I was feeling emotional, hopeless. And it started getting small. It started out small, then it started getting constantly and I started using more. So any other drug or marijuana, you use any cocaine or crack or anything else? I tried cocaine, but it really wasn't my drug of choice, but I've tried it. So what's your drug, drug of choice? Well, it's marijuana. And then and you were selling, you were selling the whole, some other, were you selling marijuana and cocaine or what were you selling? I was selling cocaine, but it was, I was mo smoking most of marijuana. Um, how, and you said you started at 19. How long did you sell it for? How long were you involved in, in the drug selling? On and off up until I came to prison. That was 10 years ago? No, I started selling drugs probably in 97, 96. Right. All the way up to 10 years ago, all the way to about 13. So about 96 to about 13. Yes, sir. I don't know. 15, 17 years. Yes, sir. You have any children? Yes, sir. You have any contact with your children? Yes, sir. How old are they? They're both 21. When they were younger, if you had somebody pushing dope on them, how would you have felt? It wasn't right. I wouldn't feel good about that at all. What do you think you were doing to people? I know victimizing people and myself. Have you had any disciplinary write-ups? Yes, sir. I had a few. When's the last one you had? I think May of 22. What was that for? A cell phone. What you doing with a cell phone? I just needed to contact my family and talk to my family. Y'all didn't have y'all have access to contact your family there? They wasn't able to put money on the phone always, and my kids was going through mental, one of my daughters, she was going through mental issues. And my son was disabled, and I, I knew it was wrong. And I admit to my guilt, I knew I was wrong. I knew I was breaking the law, and that was just criminal thinking. But I had the cell phone. All right, we had you did you had a contraband in 2021, 20, March of 21, November of 21, May of 22. So those are all cell phones. Mostly as I could think of. You know, you're not supposed to have cell phones. Yes, sir. I doesn't. Uh, what classes have you taken? Um, I took AANA, STAR program, substance abuse, living in balance, thinking for a change. Uh, experiencing God, vets incarcerated, and that's it. That's most of what I think of, but I know I took some more. Anger management. So what's your plans if you'd be released? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? 
Um, I would get, I would continue my AA, NA meetings, uh, work for Mr. Rayfield Beers, doing diesel mechanic, um, work for this, be a, be a youth ambassador with vote of the experience and work with the Innocent Project of New Orleans and continue to go to school, get my CDLs. And once I work, save some money up, I plan on moving to Seattle, Washington to be with one of my disabled sisters. Okay, Warden, what you got for me? Well, if you can tell already, Bernard, is he's, he's simply honest. He's gonna tell you straight up what he's got. He's going up for his uh, test tomorrow to move up to the next level on his education part. Um, if he weren't in school, we would probably have him working out with us out here. He hadn't had any write-up since he came to us. And how long has he been there? He hadn't been here, but uh, he came to us in December. And where were you before? Louisiana State Penitentiary. Okay. All right, Warren, thank you. All right, we'll hear from uh, uh, Ms. Meredith. You want to wrap up at the end? You want to let these folks speak? And you wrap up after we hear from uh, from everybody? Yes, please, Commissioner Kelsey. I, I wanted to check if Dr. Virginia White was on the Zoom because she was supposed to speak for him. Virginia, okay. I all I saw was Kimberly Forrest on the Zoom. Is that not right? If Dr. White is present, the speakers were intended to be Kimberly, Dr. White, um, and then Bria Forrest, who's in, in person with y'all there, and then I was going to close. Okay, and Bria. Okay, good. Okay. okay, is Dr. White online? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Dr. White. Hi, good morning. Um, thank you for taking the time to um to hear me speak on behalf of Mr. Forrest. Um, my name is Virginia White. I'm the client service specialist at the Innocence Project New Orleans. And in this role, I just provide a range of reentry support. Um, I'd like to start by just highlighting the strengths of Mr. Forrest's reentry plan. Um, he has strong family support. Um, he has a plan to go live with his nephew in Baton Rouge, who also is employed. And Mr. Forrest would like to um, be a truck driver. So we've also connected him with the Diesel Driving School in Baton Rouge. And this would be in partnership with Employee BR, and he would be eligible for the Workforce um, Innovation and Opportunity Act grant to help um, fund that program. He also has completed the STAR program, which he briefly mentioned, and um, his family that's connected in Seattle and Louisiana or this, I don't know if you can see everyone that's on Zoom, but he has strong family support. Um, we've also connected him with Voice of the Experienced, um, where mm -hmm. he would serve as a youth ambassador. Um, but in closing, those are all just the, the highlights of the strength of the support that Mr. Forrest has um, in the community and also with family and with resources through the Innocence Project New Orleans. But I would like to highlight the STAR program that Mr. Forrest completed. Um, and I know his um, write-up was mentioned as well, but since then he has completed an intensive program um, called Criminal and Addictive Thinking. And I've had the opportunity to sit down and speak with Mr. Forrest, and you can really um, understand and get the effectiveness of that program and the impact that it's had on the way that he thinks about his actions from the past and also the present. So Mr. Forrest is aware that um, the things that he's done in the past has had an impact not only on himself and his family, but the community at large. And he's really dedicated to um, making changes in that. And he identifies where he went wrong, what to do to change that that thought and that that 
process of um, criminal and addictive thinking. So um, I really, really just wanted to speak on that because I hadn't heard about the program before. And in the way that he's able to internalize what he's learned within those nine months, it's amazing and incredible to how it's changed him um, as a as an overall person. And his family foundation is very strong. Um, he, he has a lot of siblings. He has a lot of nieces, nephews. It's just a big family. And that that strong family and faith base that they have um, is very supportive of his long-term goals. So I think that people always revert back to what they know from when they're their youth. And Mr. Forrest has a very strong foundation um, of positive people in his life. So um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak for Mr. Forrest. Thank you so much. Now we'll hear from Kimberly. Is Kimberly on the phone? Kimberly Forrest, no. Y'all don't see. They said they don't see. Oh, that's your iPad. Okay. All right, go ahead and speak, Kimberly. You're on mute. All right, still on mute. Angela, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That'd be fine. Go ahead. Yeah, you can go ahead and speak Angela then. We'll hear from Angela. Yeah. We'll take Kimberly off. Yep, sounds good. Let Angela speak. Angela, Laura, sister, father, and mother. Angela, I'm going to go to the And I wrote it. Uh, my letter just to say it because I don't want to get into too much. First, I just have to say I love my brother and I miss him really. He was very busy, close to him. We have a great family, undoubtedly, over the last decade, and maybe definitely not because of what she had had a tight grip from the history of me. I've dedicated all my, re all my free time. To research and try to find my brother, brother legal representation and to keep and continue to have faith in the outcome states he have made and had knowledge of what he's done to the public and to his family that he is now remorseful for today. All of my children are now grown adults, and I'm a grandmother of two. I am almost. I'm not going to say positively, financially come to assist in the Lord's well being and willing to assist in my brother area to help him get where he needs to be in life. Um, my home is open to him. I'm willing to take him and to require him to be helped with transportation for all he needs to see a positive life. Once my brother expressed to me in the family, that he was truly hurt in the financial burden that he put in all of us. He had to put uh, our family first. I know it was time to pray for it. I asked for you to provoke to please find me in our heart to bring him more his food and his support. This family, and I thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. We're here from Brenda now. Since I was 11. So he's been gone since I was 11. So he's been 11 for days. Middle school, junior high, high school. I would be graduating college this year, but I couldn't do it. But anyway, like you said, it's, real, it's been real hard. Like, I'm the only child that my mom has. My, the, my brother's disabled. Like, it was just a lot for me to deal with this because I don't really have too much financially, but I'm saving and I don't do anything to help him. Like, I'm 
think about partnering with him to go to the church and just be there for him mentally and physically. Like, we've been part of each other for so, for so long. And it's hard every time. It's hard all day. It's hard every day, every day, every day. Like, I know people can't. Like, I know people lose their dad. Like, dead, like, lose their dad, but I lost my dad and still had him and had to deal with it. And it was it's still hard to this day. Like, but I mean, I can't. Like, I'm so emotionally strong right now. I, I can't lose. I just, I feel like my life is all about and it's heat. But I just hope y'all find it in your heart. I know we, I know. For sure, I know. Being in his blood, his seed, I know he's learned from what he's done in this experience. This is what was up. And not having, like, he has family, but being so far away, everyone separated. It was hard on him, too. Also, he had to be away from himself. But he's very humble. And he's humble himself. And he's taught me to be humble as well. And I just wish the very best for him. I hope. I know everything's going to go well. I'm always here for him. And whenever he comes home, I'm never going to leave his side. And I hope he never leaves All right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Hi, Bernard. Would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I just hope that everything goes well with me and I hope y'all grant me parole and that God blesses you all. And I'm gonna to continue to do my AA, NA, if I'm granted parole. I just wish y'all the best, you know, I'm sorry. And I apologize for even being here. All right, thank you. All right, Meredith, would you like to wrap us up? Yes, sir. Um, Meredith Angleson from Innocence Project New Orleans. I direct the Unjust Punishment Project. Um, Mr. Forrest has served his time very actively. He has been involved in programming since even before he was sentenced. He was doing programs in the St. Tammany Parish Jail. There are certificates from that that the board has. Um, he has really taken advantage of the, the rehabilitative opportunities at DOC. He's gone far beyond the minimum required programming. He has earned the maximum possible good time under law. And he had this great foundation from, um, and a lot of different tools from living in the balance, from thinking for a change. Um, he completed his 12 steps, but it was the nine month substance treatment and recovery program, the STAR program that really ignited his understanding, his reflection and his progress in, in his own drug use, seeing his own drug use and, um, and the impact of his selling narcotics in a completely different way. Um, you know, he has spoken about this. You heard from Dr. White about their conversations about it. He's he's pretty evangelical about the STAR program from our conversations and even said today, I would do that again. <laughs> That's a good program. I would do it all over again just for fun. Um, but you actually don't have to take his word for it. You have letters um, in, our, in our submission from the staff who supervised him, from the staff who run it. Um, Shelly Edgerton, who's the director of opioid treatments for department uh, treatment programs for Department of Corrections, noted his his commitment to the three times a week sessions for nine months that he was open in discussing his challenges, that he made remarkable strides in his uh, treatment during that time. And Ms. Lori Stone, who is the peer facilitator um, who led the program, she describes in her letter that she could see how this changed, not just his thinking, but his actions, that he was, the way he was dealing in real time with people around him at Angola, thinking about the outcome of any choice that he made before he made it, reflecting on selling and doing drugs, and in a way that showed a really a new understanding of why he made those decisions and why they were wrong, as well as his commitment not to return to that way of life if he were released. And she also referred to him being vulnerable and teachable at all times and sharing with weight and with debt. Um, so, Go ahead. To wrap uh, up. Yes, sir. And you heard some about his reentry plan. I wanted to add that he also intends to participate in the STAR program's post-release interventions, which includes peer support, case management, parole, or probation compliance, 
uh, referrals to services. And obviously, Innocence Project New Orleans will continue to coordinate with staff from the STAR program to make sure that we are all on the same page for Mr. Forrest. Um, and he, he does have supportive family, both in Louisiana and in Washington State, many of whom are on Zoom and got up very early to be present. Um, and he we will help him with his very specific plans to build, you know, to, to get his CDL, to um, hopefully become a business owner. He's working towards that as well. And if he wishes to relocate to Seattle, we will help him with that. Um, you've seen he has significant family support and obviously the emotion and the, the voices of the people who spoke today speak to the profundity of that and the real connection that still exists between folks um, even after 10 years. So in light of the big changes that he's made, his very sturdy reentry plan, his deep commitment to pursuing those plans that are concrete, specific, not just aspirations, um, and doing that over ever becoming a narcotic seller or user, again, we are asking this board to grant approval. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Bernard, um, looks like you have put in a lot of work. You've done a lot of work. Uh, got some good support. Got your warden speaking well of you. I'm, you know, I'm disappointed about uh, the, the cell phones. I'll be honest with you. I mean, those are things that, you know, that you should know. I mean, that, that's not too terribly far. Very disappointed uh, about that. But you've, you've got a great, you know, you really have a lot of really good fan support and you've taken a lot of good classes, uh, trying to better yourself. Uh, my vote today would be to grant your parole. Uh, Thank you. You would have uh, four hours per month of community service due, give back to the community. Uh, I'd want you to attend NAAA three times a week. And I'd want you to continue to work on your GED. I'd like for you to obtain your GED. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Renatza. All right, uh, Mr. Forrest, I do agree. My vote also is to grant. You have a low risk score. You have obvious strong family support, positive remarks by the ward, and you've done good programs, especially the STAR. I'm, I'm uh, excited that you are gonna continue that. So my vote would be to grant to the reentry plan developed by the Innocence Project. Good luck. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My vote is the same for the same reasons. All right, you have three votes to grant your parole. Your parole's been great. You understand the stipulations? Yes, sir. The community service, four hours, NAA three times a week, and get your GED. That's important. You can do it. Yes, sir. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.